Hey, Busy Crafters. Welcome back to my channel. Well, right now my family really wants pizza, and as you can tell, we are currently experiencing the snowfall, and it doesn't look like we're going to go anywhere for a while. We are experiencing probably about 40 inches of snow, and it's continuing to come down. So I guess I'll have to make it myself. I started off with this recipe that I found on Pinterest. It's an amazing recipe, and if I can find who did it, I'll go ahead and link it down in the description box below. I started off with one cup of flour, all-purpose flour, in that bowl, and I'm putting in one package of instant or quick yeast. It goes about um, two and a fourth teaspoons for that packet. So, I'm out of breath. And then I go ahead and add the salt. That is three-fourths teaspoons of salt. And then I add the one teaspoon of sugar along with a half a teaspoon of dry oregano. And the recipe calls for a fourth a teaspoon of garlic powder. Unfortunately, I don't have powder, so I just substituted it with garlic salt. I go ahead and stir it up really nicely. And then I'm going to add two-thirds cups of warm water, which is coming up. Now, I've noticed I've, I've done this pizza crust for, you know, a few times. And I've noticed that the warmer the water is, the easier the dough is to spread on the, the pan, the pizza pan. So the warmer the water, the better, in my opinion. I'm also going to be adding the two tablespoons of oil. This dough is going to be extremely sticky. So that's why we have the extra flour off to the side. The recipe calls for one and a half to two cups of all-purpose flour. And it's mainly because the extra is for the rolling to make sure that the dough is not sticky and easy to work with. So now we're just gonna stir it all up. I make sure everything is mixed in very well because I don't like biting into a piece of pizza and then getting a mouthful of flour. So that looks good. Now we're gonna go ahead and add in some of the extra flour. And it, at this point, it starts getting a little bit harder to do it with the, the fork. So I'm gonna eventually go ahead and uh, take it off the fork and just go by hand. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. And it's still very sticky. As you can tell, it's, it's very sticky and that's not gonna work. So we're gonna have to go ahead and put in some more. And at this point, this is where I go ahead and use my hands to finish it all off. Um, I came across this dough, like I said, on Pinterest, and I had another dough, and that dough is very dense and heavy, and this dough is light and fluffy, and just something that you would find from a actual pizzeria. So that's why, and this dough is really fun. To me, this dough is really fun to to make. I really enjoy making it. And just seeing the smiles on my husband and kid's face when I pull it out of the oven and it's just, it's really worth it. You know, I say, you know, try it. So yeah, there goes a lot of kneading. Um, I, I do this, I, I make sure, I guess I can over knead it. I, if there is a such thing as over kneading only because I want to make sure that the dough is, you know, mixed in very well. So here we go, keeping on kneading it. It's a good hand workout as long as you don't have arthritis or, you know, carpal tunnel. <laughs> but here we go. Just adding more uh, dough or flour to it and making sure it's all mixed in very well. And hopefully we'll be getting on with it soon. <laughs> But I just wanted to show you guys just how, like, now even the flour that was on my hands is now coming off my hands and into the dough. And it really leaves not much residue after it's mixed in very well. And, yeah, there we go. Now we're going to go ahead and get the pan. you got to make sure you spray the pan with a nonstick. I use Pam, but any nonstick is really good. Just, you know, go ahead and spray it on the pan lightly. 
Also, before you start making your dough, go ahead and preheat your oven to 425. So that way it's all nice and preheated for the dough. With this dough, you can either put it off to the side for a little bit to let it rise. Or you could just go ahead and do what I do here. And I just put it directly into the oven after everything's done and it turns out nicer. The next time I make this pizza dough, I am going to let it rise because I would like to try the stuffed crust. I mean, I've already bought the, um, what do you call it? You know, string cheese. There you go. I, I already bought the string cheese for this dough, but I just didn't have the patience to let it rise. I will also go ahead and put the full recipe and the step-by-step -step instructions in the description box below. So now that I have all the pizza dough spread out across the pan, I just have to take a fork and poke little holes into it. So that way, the when, when pizza dough doesn't have the holes poked into them, it tends to blow up like a balloon. And that's why sometimes when you get a pizza from the pizza place, there's one that there's that one piece that has no toppings and it's like blown up. That's because that piece did not get uh, holes. So... Here we go. I am going to be making two pizzas, but I'm only going to have you watch one of the doughs being prepped. But both pizzas are going to be, you know, done. We, my husband and I, we can't do a lot of tomato sauce. You know, once you hit 40s, you kind of go downhill from there and your body is like not liking. You like tomato sauce, but your body doesn't like tomato sauce and tomato sauce don't like you. So we just have to use extra virgin olive oil for some of our pizza as well as garlic, uh, minced garlic. And I get both of those from Sam's Club, the minced garlic there in the big tub, and the olive oil I got from Sam's Club. So I'm just spreading that on really well. Now here comes the garlic. Now, a lot of people might not like a lot of garlic, so go ahead and put tomato sauce on it. You can get the ragu, you can get the... Even the ragu Alfredo sauce. You can even make your own sauce. Because that's what I used to do. I used to make my own pizza sauce. Until, you know, pizza sauce don't like me no more. So, now we're just going to be going ahead and spreading along the little minced garlic. And this might look like a lot of garlic. But my family really loves garlic. And I also heard that garlic also helps really well with uh, gout. So, I needed just a little bit more on that one side, so we're going to add a little bit more. And once it's all cooked, like, you have the hint of garlic, but it's not, like, overwhelming. So, I know it looks scarier than it is, but really, it's not all that bad. But this is the part where you get to be creative and make the pizza the way you want to make it. Some people might like vegetables or more meat. I did not have mozzarella cheese but the monterey jack cheese has been working really well and i think it tastes better you know i mean i like monterey jack you could use it for a lot so just spreading around the monterey jack now and then this pizza is going to be a pepperoni salami and pepperoni pizza that combination with the garlic is it's really delicious and it's one of my family's favorites so now we just go ahead, make sure you don't add too much cheese because you do want your dough to cook evenly and not be raw in the middle like some frozen pizzas end up doing. They're always raw in the middle. So now we're going to add the salami. And we really like a lot of toppings. So I'm pretty generous with the toppings on all my pizzas really. And just make sure, you know, <laughs> every square inch of that pizza is covered with meat and cheese and sauce and everything. It turns out really well. Because I live in a higher, alto or higher altitude, I do have to cook my pizza for a little bit longer than the instructions say. When I cooked it, as the instructions said, for 15 minutes... The dough was cooked, it was light and fluffy, and it was nice, but it was kind of sagging, you know. So my family kind of likes a little bit more of a harder crust. So I cooked mine for 17 minutes this time, and it turned out good. 
So now we're going to be adding the pepperoni and wherever there is, you, you, you guys can see, like, I don't have to explain everything because, you know, you guys are watching it along with me. And I really appreciate you guys for coming in and checking this out. Um, I hope you go ahead and try it. And if you do, please leave a comment and let me know what you think or what you would want to do different or if you did exactly what the video is showing right now, what I did. And go ahead and like and share this video and please subscribe. It will really help my channel grow. Let YouTube know that you guys are liking what you're seeing. So now we're finishing up with the pepperoni. And I tell you, I, the anxiety from all this snow is really getting to me right now. We are buried. But that's why I'm trying to focus on doing other things, you know. Because life is good and that's just what it is. So now we're adding the pepperoncinis or the banana peppers um, to this. Something that I did too to this pizza that I didn't show is I did go back and put some bacon bits on it. Like the, the crushed, they're from Hormel. I'll show you when we do the, uh, the other pizza. So there's that pizza minus the bacon bits. I did put those back on. So now this is going to be my barbecued chicken onion pizza. And once again, you have to put the holes in it, you know. You don't want your pizza dough to bubble up and knock off all of your toppings into the oven. That would be catastrophic. And it would be a lot more painful than the pizza's worth, really, you know, to have all that. So now I'm going ahead and using some Baby Ray's, Sweet Baby Ray's um, barbecue sauce. It's original. Something I like about Sweet Baby Ray's, and a lot of barbecue sauces do this, is you can do many different flavors. So that's always good, but I had original on hand, you know, because can't really make it to the store to do much else. <laughs> so just add a little bit more. Now you go ahead and spread it around. Now, the thing that I found out is it looked like a lot of barbecue sauce, but because of the brush that I was using, it kind of soaked up a lot more in the brush than actually on the pizza. So I think the next time I make this, I will have to add a lot more barbecue sauce and maybe not use that brush and just spread it around with a spoon. So now we're going ahead and putting some more Monterey Jack on to this pizza. And again, make sure you don't center load it. Make sure everything's all spread out evenly because you want your crust to bake evenly. You know, there's nothing worse than biting into a beautiful, wonderful pizza that you just made and the dough being doughy and undercooked. And now we're gonna do some chicken strips that I got from Stater Brothers before the storm hit. We were being, we were told for a couple of weeks that the storm was coming and that's why we had to go to the store and pick up some supplies, you know, just in case. Cause sometimes they say it's a big storm coming and then the storm never comes and it's ridiculous. But this time they were right and the storm came and it's still here and it's getting pretty scary out there. By the grace of God, and only by the grace of God, we still have power, and everything is good. So, now we're going to be adding some onions. I got those onions from Santa Brothers, but that was for a previous meal a couple days ago, because we don't eat a lot of onions, because once again, we like onions, onions don't like us, you know. And now we're going ahead and putting those bacon bits on, and I also put those on the other pizza as well. And now they are just about ready to go into the preheated oven at 425. Again, 17 minutes later, the pizzas are cooked and they are done, ready to go. Look at how beautiful they are. I think I, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I think that sometimes they come out a little bit better than, you know, pizza places. <laughs> so go ahead and enjoy your pizza. Let me know what you think. Thank you, guys. Have a nice day.